Hi, I'm Tina Lee, and you're listening to the Functional Tennis Podcast. Welcome to the Functional Tennis Podcast. I'm Fabio Mali, your host. This is the YouTube version, and it's episode 151 in total. Today, I speak to Tina Lee. Tina Lee is a coach, and she is the parent of a young kid, one of the best under 12s in the world, Jordan Lee. Jordan, a few weeks ago, won a prestigious IMG Future Stars tournament in the Thai Club in Greece, which I attended, and I managed to see him play. I didn't see the final, actually, but I saw him practice during the week, and yeah, I commentated on the semi-final match. He's a great player, and definitely he's in the right hands. He's based in the USTA Training Center in the States, and Martina, or Tina, as she's known as, tells us all about it it's a great chat we find out about tina her own tennis journey her coaching career what she learned from marion vida and a lot more and she also touches on jordan how much he trains and trying not to overtrain and various other little things it's a really interesting chat so i hope you enjoy it actually i know you're going to enjoy it before we get started a shout out to our podcast sponsor slinger who make the awesome portable ball machine the slinger bag I use one personally. I've been using one for about two years now. If you have any questions, you can feel free to ask me. But if you want to know any other questions, head over to slingerbag.com and you can get some answers there. But other than that, let's get this chat started and let me know in the comments what you think. Here we go. Hi, Martina. Or hi, Tina. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the Functional Tennis Podcast. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Great. Uh, it was great to meet you in greece and see your your son jordan i actually i saw well saw the main court matches i saw jordan practicing my first bus trip that i took to the to the tatai club you were on it there's only a few people on it and i didn't get to see the final though but it was great to meet you and yeah well done on so far doing a great journey with jordan but can't wait to find out all a bit more about it but first of all tell us about you you were a player you're a coach, you work for the USTA at the minute, and tell us about your journey. Yeah, so I am I am from Slovakia. I was raised in Slovakia in Bratislava, and I started playing tennis when I was nine, so it was a bit later, um, you know, so like the, the 12 and under and 14 and under wasn't, you know, the, the biggest years for me, but then um, I was still pretty good in, in the juniors. I play. I started playing ITF tournaments when I was about 16 and uh, made it to, I think I was about 70 on the ITF ranking. So it, it was pretty good. But at the same time, our birth year um, from, from my generation, it was very, very strong. So in Slovakia, it was 10 of us in the top 100 at, the, at, at that time. So, you know, the best, the biggest tournaments like the national kind of like the national teams go into the biggest events. Um, I, I had to do it on my own. I wasn't like a part of the national squad because I was like the number eight and only the top four got to go. So, you know, it was um, it was a little tough, but, you know, still still I love the sport. So, you know, it was I got to play all the, the, the bigger events and, and it was so fun. And then did you play as a senior? Did you transition? Then I then I started playing some of the pro events, and uh, I was about four hundred something like that, maybe three some three hundred something in doubles, and around four hundred something in the in the uh, singles. But you know, so I I didn't play the biggest events. I just stayed with like the the twenty five k's and and tournaments like that. Yeah, and then after that, I went to college, um, and did my masters, and basically started coaching after that. And you, you stayed based in the U.S. then. I stayed based in the U.S. since yes, ever since. And how, tell us about your coaching journey. I did read something about Marion Vida. You were you worked under him for a while, or he was a mentor. No, not, not really worked under him. But I'm I'm from uh, from the home tennis club. It's Slovan Bratislava, and basically I I was very fortunate to kind of you know at the time when I was a junior back home, um, Marian was first a player. And then he, he coached Dominic Herbati for, for many years, as we know. And basically, you know, it's, um, in, um, in my tennis club, we had the courts right next to each other the way we practice. So I got to be, you know, right next to him for, from, from morning till the evening. And his daughters play tennis as well. So I got to play with them and basically kind of the, the journey he had with Dominic. Um, I witnessed it firsthand and, you know, we're kind of like, you know, in my tennis club back home, it's like a big family. So, you know, a lot of the things we, we discuss and, and talk to each other about, you know, the experiences and and stuff like that. So 
Um, that, that was a great experience, yeah. How, what did you learn from him? I think the, the biggest thing with him, he has such a amazing charisma around him and, and, you know, he steps on the court with his players and, and literally everybody lights up. Um, and I think it's just, um, the energy that he gives, the positive energy that he gives is just amazing. And I think that's kind of like the biggest thing that I'm always trying to, you know, remind myself how important it is because he, he kind of, he, he's the type of leader on the court that, you just want to be around him. You just want to have fun on the court. You just want to work hard, you know, and it's just, I think that's the biggest thing. And are you surprised or not surprised he's done such great things with Djokovic while he worked with him? No, not at all. I mean, if you put a player that's naturally, you know, trying to achieve big things and, and a coach like Marian, who, who just, you know, he kind of, I think he has an amazing feel of what the player needs as well. Um, and he, he's not very, he, he he's he very very much kind of lets the player also f dictate what he feels and and lets them be natural and and not push on too many things you know and and I think it's just a great vibe I'm not surprised at all and um, he's actually recently um, he kind of committed to help Alex Alex Molchan uh, who is Slovakian player he's I think top fifty right now and who is led by Karol Beck who is another you know we grew up with each other another. Of, my great friend so that's going to be an amazing team i'm looking forward to see what they're going to do together yeah, that's great if for new listeners we did have marion on the podcast with goran it was very funny his sense of humor is really good and that was one amazing of, that was one of the best feedbacks we got so i'll link the episode below but yeah really nice so that's great for you and so you went to the, you went to college did your masters you started coaching how did the coaching journey go uh, it started basically, you know, when, when I, over the summers, when I would go back home, I would try to, you know, see if I can help a few players. And then I remember one of my first experiences was running kind of like a summer, summer camp in New Jersey with my friends. And, you know, like a lot of, <laughs> a lot of players get to have that experience first. And then I started just coaching in a local club in Orlando. Um, and, uh, basically from, you know, I kind of took over some of the high performance players. And then, uh, from then on in 2017, I, I started working for the USD at the national campus, um, shortly after they built it. And so what is the USDA national campus? So <laughs> it's, uh, called the uh, home of American tennis, the HOT. that's kind of like the nickname for it. And it was built, um, basically to kind of serve all kinds of tennis players from not only from professional players, but to, to, you know, um, to all, all inclusive and all, um, you know, the, the adult leagues, uh, the junior program. So we, we have it basically all, um, there is hundred courts, yeah. but the hundred yeah. courts, yeah. <laughs> um, the hundred courts are kind of divided in between all the area. So it's, you know, 20 hard courts, it's 32 green clay courts. Then we have a collegiate center there where the University of Central Florida trains and plays their matches. And then we use it as well. Um, that's, so that's additional 12 courts. Then there are pickleball courts, padel courts. Um, we have um, kind of like the, it's called the family zone. And uh, that's the courts built just for the little kids. That's 36 foot courts. And initially, we also had the 60-foot courts, which were later done for the pickleball. And then um, we have six indoor courts, which we share with player development, which is the Team USA side. And behind the building is where the Team USA has their base. So that's the player development, and they have six red clay courts and additional six hard courts, and that's where the pro players and the national teams train. So that's kind of close to the public, that side. So it, is it just a mix? So obviously, you have the top... Like Taylor Fritz may train there, uh, right? Then the top, the top American juniors may train there, also, right? And then book public can use the courts as well. Yes, public can use the well the on the public side. So it's a huge facility, you know, and the, basically maybe one third of it is the player development, which is close to the public, but it's basically it's one facility. It's just you have a separate separate entrance. Um, and it's kind of connected with the uh, indoor center and the indoor center public can use, but you don't get to get out on the other side to just watch the pros play. But, you know, very, very, very often they train on our side, on the public side, if they need to prepare on green clay or, 
if uh, they need to have the surface on, on you know, the, the hard courts, the plexi cushion that's on our side. So, um, so it's, you know, it's nothing inordinary to, to see Taylor Fritz walk by or when we first opened, Francis TFO trained there, Madison Keys trains there, Sissy Bell is when she was still playing, trained there. Um, some pros come to just prepare on those courts. So, you know, it's pretty cool for the juniors, especially to run into them here and there. And from the development side point of view, is it all financed by, supported by the USTA or is there paying programs there also? On the player development side, there is no paying programs, though that's by invitation. So, you know, the, the national coaches for the USTA, they get to, you know, they, they watch players, they go to the national events, um, and then they invite players for either camps or for some training. And then the public side, though, that's that's paid programs. So we have, you know, programs, all the programs you can think of from the 10 and under, little kids, Red Bull, Orange, to, um, you know, the, the junior programs and, and the high performance program, which has the kind of like the better juniors. And tell me, what is your role so in all this tennis heaven? So, yeah, it, it literally is like a tennis heaven. <laughs> uh, so I'm uh, the head coach of the high performance program. So I'm in charge of the of the best juniors that we have, you know, for, for on the public side. So that's that's the program that I run. The, you know, the youngest one is Jordan, probably. But uh, it's kind of starts between age 12 um, up until 18. And they have to be a certain level to, to be able. I, I have to approve players to be in the program. So. Um, it's not like someone can just sign up for that program and say, hey, I want to train at the campus and I want to be at the high performance program. There is a progression and there is a pathway um, that we have on campus. And, you know, if somebody kind of um, follow, follows the criteria, then, then they're in a high performance program. And the goal then would be to move into the, the other side of the academy. Is that the goal for these? That, yes, that, that would be the goal. And, you know, we, because we, we share the facility, we, you know, we, um, we cooperate with each other so much. Very, very often we have players that are maybe not the player development player, but they are, um, good enough of a level to come play f some matches or, or mix in here and there. You know, you can have a 15 year old, uh, great player um, who who trains with a 14 year old or like he'll get to play matches with a 14 year old on the player development side who you know the level may be the same so you know on the junior side it's it's very easy to mix and um, they they are you know the the coaches at the, the national coaches at the player development side are amazing and and we, you know we we are literally daily in touch about you know what we can do to help the players on our side as well. And are, are you on court or are you planning? Where's, where's your day spent? My, my, my day is spent both. Um, when we are on court, I'm always on court. I don't necessarily have to run my own court depending on how many players, you know, are, but like I, I love to be on court. So that's my favorite part of the day. So I don't, I don't like to skip that part. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm on the court most of the time, pretty much all the time, unless there is, you know, like a meeting or something that, that I have to attend to. But when, when we are on court, I'm on court. Great. And okay. So Jordan, your son is, was the, the champion in the title of the RMG Future Stars. He's possibly one of the best under 12s in the world. It's hard to give a definite yeah. answer, but he's up there, you know, he's thereabouts, I'm sure. What? does his typical training week look like so <laughs> yeah um jordan basically you know is uh, right now for the last year he's doing online school so he comes in the morning and um as i was just talking about the the player development side he jordan is in between both both of us and so we usually, you know, I communicate with the national coach, Troy, who, Troy Han, who is, uh, kind of in charge of the 12 and unders and his age group. And, uh, we just put the schedule together for the next day, see what I have for him, see what he has for him. But basically he comes with me in the morning and, uh, he has his morning practice, whether it's with, with my group or whether it's like a, you know, just one hour private lesson, something like that. Um, and then, uh, same with the afternoon. So he, he plays twice a day for the most part, depending on how he feels. And uh, he gets to spend his day most of the time over there at the campus. You know, it's it's an amazing facility. It's not like um, 
he has a court and then he has to go home. He, he has a room where he gets to do his school. There are locker rooms. There is a restaurant. So basically most of his time is spent there. And you work there. So that's great as well. Like you, Exactly. You can keep your <laughs> yeah, eye on him. Yeah. And does yeah. he do much off court? What's that? Sorry. Does he do much work off court in the gym or let's say gym work and let's say footwork, not tennis racket related work on the court? Yes, we're this. This is an area we're trying to step up a little bit now because, um, you know, me being from Europe, I used to do way more of court than on court. For those who train in Europe, they they understand how difficult it is sometimes to get a court time, and so you do so much fitness and you do so much stuff on your own of court. So um, over here, obviously, we have the luxury of having the courts, having the balls, and all that. So it's very tempting to spend a lot of time on the court, especially if. The, the player himself is, you know, I want to play, I want to play. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, you know, trying to do a better job of limiting it a little bit and, and giving him a better balance, uh, whether he likes it or not, <laughs> and not spend as much time on the court. But on the player development side, they do have a gym that, so he has some fitness training over there. And then, you know, the, the footwork and things like that, we try to, we try to do on our side as well and, and try to, you know, figure that out. But he, because he's so young, it's not like there is, you know, you're you're 12 years old. You're not a pro player, so it's it's not like this is this is your plan. This is your fitness plan, and you're gonna have to follow this every single day. It's more kind of like you know gauging to see how he feels, and um, that we don't overdo the hitting part of of the day. And um, he does some some like I said, some fitness in the gym over there, some recovery with them, some some things that I keep an eye on. And then you know there are, there are days when I just tell him. Um, figure out what you want to do. You know, do something on your own. This, this is this is your sport. This is what you want to do. So you know, you don't have. I'm not giving you any practice today. And you, if you want to get better, think about what you know, what you're lacking, or what you can do better at, and and do it on your own. Whether it's just going outside on the driveway and you know, do some shadowing or going running on his own. Um, that's a big part for me. That. He drives some of, he understands his role in the process as well. I, I don't like to just have things super planned for him and tell him this is what you're doing. A lot of it has to come from him. And how, how good is he at? Does he come up with stuff? Yeah, he, he, he's pretty good. He has some routines that he, he uses. And during the pandemic, you know, we just kind of like learn some of the routines with just running or some, some shadows, some things like that. Um, he, it's, he's not the most creative, but at the same time, you know, he, he likes to do stuff on his own. And he knows that that's a, that's a big part for, you know, for me to uh, make sure that it comes from him. You know, like if you, like I said, if you want to get better, you, you find a way to get better, even if you don't do the right thing. Like you go do something, you know, and if it's not, obviously it's not going to be as good as if you had a trainer do something with you, but it came from you and it comes from your heart and... Um, you're going to remember that you did something extra on your own. And I think some of the confidence comes from that as well. And he's only 12. Exactly. So, you know, do, you know, be a kid. And I remember I used to train a little bit in the National Training Center in Ireland. And I used to hit with some of the juniors now older than him uh, and even some young senior players. And be like, OK, what do you want to do now? And they're just like, I don't know. And once you hear that answer, you know, this ain't you know it's exactly a, i'm not a, yeah it's tough when you hear that. Ex exactly you should know and, what and you want to work on but exactly and the, the, you know that's kind of the thing where you know sometimes i feel like we give too much to the players and we organize everything for them a little too much and they don't understand their own role in the process so that's that's something that i studied with jordan pretty young obviously he's just 12 he just turned 12 now but you know i made it clear even during the pandemic already like look you, you can either use this time to get better and and figure out what you want to do or or just relax and don't do anything it's up to you what you want to do and you know he, he learned his routines and why do you think let's say he is one of the best juniors in the world for his age rather than somebody else who plays just as much but isn't what does it ultimately come down to in your eyes that's that's a tough one, you know. I I am learning every day too, so it's there. There is no formula that I can <laughs> that I can say or like a reason that I can say. But you know, even when he was 
when he was a baby, he I'm he 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 has a very good touch. So he his hand is very good, which is good, you know, it's great. But at the end of the day, it's going to limit him in some ways as well because he relies on the hand a little too much, and he has to learn to use everything else like legs yeah. and and all that. But um, for right now, I think that was his big advantage that he just feels the ball really well and he has a lot of passion, you know, for, for playing. He's not scared to compete. He loves to compete. He, he loves to be to kind of put on the stage in front of people. We always joke with his coaches, you know, because, um, like, okay, put Jordan on the center court. It's a different player than put Jordan on the, on the back of somewhere where nobody is watching. He's always like, he, he loves to be put out there when people see him and show off a little bit. So, you know, that's, I think, especially like a tournament like this, that was to his advantage a little bit because he just felt so comfortable with that. Um, but, you know, he, he doesn't have to train so much to still feel the ball really well. And I think right now, you know, for, for this age, this still works for him to his advantage a lot. So I think that's probably one of the differences right now. Um, that it's going to be a different story when he's 15, 16, when everybody hits an amazing ball, even if, you know, uh, even if they, they're not maybe as talented. So that's something we'll see what's going to happen. And a big message at, at the Future Stars event was that, look, just because you're winning today, does not mean anything. And I was sitting beside one of the coaches, I think I mentioned this a few weeks ago, where the coach was like, I was that kid under 12 winning tournaments, beating, he was naming the players, beating them love and love. And then when he was 18, he was the guy losing to them love and love. So how do you manage those expectations? Yes, uh, and you know, that's that, that is so true. So basically, it's I, I emphasize the process. You know, with not just with Jordan, but with all the players, it's uh, in, even if you're 14, 15, 16, 17, it's still about improvement. It's still about the process. You, it's still about being hungry to get better every single day. And the results, you know, you'll have a good day, you'll have a bad day. But the process is what I put pressure on. So same with him. If, if he wants to go on the court um, and train, that's where I'm tough, you know. It's on the court is when I'm tough, when it's the training part of it. Because it's if you want to be here, you need to do it well. You know, you need to do it right. You at least, you know, we we in at the USDA, especially player development, they they learn the non we call it the non negotiable. So it's you know effort, engagement, discipline, respect. Those are the things that, um, especially like for me, they that's everything, especially for the junior players. So you know, if if you go on the court, be engaged. If uh, you know, if, if you're out there, you have to give your full effort, full effort and, you know, be disciplined. And I think that's the main message for for him that I emphasize every single day. And, you know, right now, yes, he had an amazing result, but um, we, we didn't really, you know, put any emphasis, like not any emphasis. Of course, it's great. And, you know, he was happy and um, he, he knows it's a great result. But at the same time, it's it wasn't like, okay, we're, we're preparing for the Future Stars tournament and let's go show off at the Future Stars tournament or something like that. It wasn't, it wasn't like that at all. And he basically, it was about training every day because you want to be better today than you were yesterday. Um, and we're going to go to Greece. It's going to be so fun. You'll get to meet so many, you know, kids from around the world. And, you know, he was just excited to be there in, in like to meet the other kids. He had so much fun the whole entire week. We didn't make it about training or matches or, or none of that, you know, and he just happened to win, you know, but it wasn't something where it was like, oh my God, like you need to be winning right now. This is what, you know, he, he knows that it was a great result, but it doesn't mean much. Yeah. So, you know, one, one of the, one of, you know, one of the players he really looks up to just like every other kid, probably Nadal, you know, he, um, I think after he won La Petite or he won some big tournament, there is a video out there on YouTube where he says, where they inter interview him after the match and he says, well, just because I won this tournament doesn't mean I'm going to be a good player. So I go back out and train and Jordan seen this video a gazillion times because, <laughs> because that's something, you know, that uh, I always play for him if he's, you know, if he's... Uh, just to kind of remind him, like, look, like, then this is at 14 and then he wants something else. And, you know, so the message is the process and the engagement and the non-negotiables, the things that he can control to get better. 
And the results we don't emphasize as much right now. You know, he just started playing the 12 and under tournaments a year before this tournament. So he went from, you know, things happen really fast in the 12 and under. So I know that he's going to experience some, you know, tough times coming up because you're not going to be winning just yeah. like that all the time, you know. So I understand the process and this is a long journey. And, and as long as he, you know, he loves what he's doing, I think that, whether he's winning or losing, at the end of the day, you know, get better every day. And if you love what you do, be happy on the court. And that's all that matters. So, Yeah, because it is important because obviously you won there. But also to lose and have that attitude as well is important because you lose quite a bit and have the hunger to keep going. And it's not the end. Exactly. The you know, yeah. And then and that's the thing. Like, you, it, this, this is a... This is a super tough sport. And it's only going to get harder. The, you know, that's kind of what I keep telling him enjoy you know what you're doing right now like with those tournaments and and you you have your friends around and it's kind of all fun but at some point you know if you're still playing when you're 16 17 and start playing the challengers and you're in the middle of nowhere and by yourself and uh you know it's 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 not as easy it's only going to get harder so you you have to love what you do and that's the only thing that's going to keep you driving when you're you know, when things get really tough and lonely, it's 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 lonely out there. <laughs> when you when you start playing the pro events, especially some of the IT events as well, and you know, grade fives, it's it's not it's not a toy club no, for sure. <laughs> there's very few until you, unless you do slams, really, or some grade one. Exactly, but exactly. Tell me the the differences, obviously, from a cultural and from a performance point of view. From let's say you back home, where let's say. Jordan was playing back home. He would he wouldn't have as much competition. There's a smaller basket of players compared to the USDA, which is probably where you are now. It's probably the most extreme, where there's just so many players. How much do you, do you think, and how much an advantage does that give a young player to be in such a high performance area compared to back home? Yes, I mean, for, for this age, for this age, for sure, I think for the 12 and under and 14 and under, we definitely have an advantage. And I, and I saw it now when after Greece, we went home for a week, you know, it's harder to get a court time. Um, definitely much harder over the winter time when everybody has to get a court indoors. So they, you know, those players really don't play as much and it's way more difficult for them to, to get someone to play with. I think so for right now, um, that makes a huge difference, I think. You know, we, we, we play whenever we want to, basically. There is at the USDA, there is always somebody to play with, especially like for a 12 year old. You don't, you can hit with anyone, basically, you know. So, and, and it's still a decent level for you. So it's way easier, of course. Like once the, the higher the level, sometimes I feel like in, in Europe, maybe it's actually better than, than over here. Maybe like the, at the, you know, some of the higher level ITF players and all that. I know that like in Spain or Italy or somewhere over there, um, there is tons of really good players. And um, that's something that, you know, it's interesting to see um, how how they, maybe the, the younger players in Europe, they don't play as much, but I think they, they do lots of fitness and they get very athletic. And, and that's something that's to their advantage when they get older. So... This is one of the things that I'm trying to be careful with Jordan. Like, let's even though the courts are out here, everything is available to us. We can't be training like you know. You, you still have to be very wise about how much time you spend on the court and and not overdo it and just keep keep it under the limits. Maybe there are players who play way more than him, even though he has the courts right here um, at this age. Because I I know that this is a long journey and and he's gonna have to stay healthy and you know keep being hungry for when he's older. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point you make. And there is also then, the, with some juniors right now, maybe play, you know, they play so much, they train so much, and then you got some who play a bit less, and they're probably better, so there's a lot more to come from them rather than the ones who are maxing out. That's what maybe a lot of people don't see either. So some kids don't play that much, but they're really good, and once they play more, then they get, they, they get better and better and excel. Whether there's only so much you can play, and when you max right. out, you're in trouble. Right. And, you know, you don't want to max out at a young age either. <laughs> so it's, it's you know, that, that, that's like you, you can max out and be very good and at 12, 13 years old. But 
it's difficult to keep up with with that with that volume for many many years so i think that's that's the big part of it you know like you want to maybe focus on the quality when you're younger and and just emphasize for the player to do the right things and you know whatever result it brings at the time it is what it is you know somebody's better at that time somebody's not but then figure out what volume works when they get older and and that's when you can start loading a little bit more so you know it's no, nobody has a perfect formula i think and i i don't know it all either uh, but you know just just from my experience and the players that i know you know it's 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 better to be very wise about that volume on the court and as you mentioned the values are really important so now is the time to work on those values because whether you're on a tennis court or off tennis court those values stand for for your life exactly exactly and you know you, you can push someone at 12 13 as much as you want to but at the end of the day if it's not going to come from them uh when the time really matters when they're 16 17 they're gonna they're gonna give up anyway yeah. you know it's, it's it has to be something that they 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 want to do and um like i like i told you that's kind of one of the things where i have at least one day a week or you know from time to time it's just like i don't know do what you do figure out what you want to do and you know if 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 you just need to rest you just need to rest if you want to do something go you know and figure out what you want to do and how do you balance that mother coach relationship with them must be extremely Ooh. tough yeah this that's probably the, the, the toughest one you know like the on court process and and the tennis part is easy but the balance is really hard well yes i mean it's it's tough because especially since he's you know like usda is where i work too that's where he's trained so it's not just like i'm his coach and we go on the court and then i also have a different job and and we go home it's basically you know be, being being there at the courts all day with me and then we go home and he you know it's, I, we have to figure out the school and food and all that so it's it's difficult but at the same time i'm very fortunate to have great great support around me um, with that, you know, I, the, the coaches, he, he has a coach uh, that he just adores and really, you know, they get along really well. Coach Felipe, he's coach from, from my program, from the high performance program. Same with the national coach, Coach Troy. We have um, another great family friends, one of the national coaches, Sylvan Gachard. He, he helps him, you know, basically all, all the coaches that are there at the USDA, we try to find a good balance. So, you know, if I, I don't get on the court with him as much, um, or I try not to, you know, not to. When he's with, on the player development side, I don't see him at all, all day. So, you know, he, he comes with me, he goes his way, I go my way. And then at the end of the day, <laughs> we go home and and that's it. So, you know, I, I do have a great support. It's not like every time he's on the court, he's with me. I It's probably actually... He's, I spend less time with him than I spend with my other players at this point um, right now, just because I'm trying to give him a, you know, room to be away from me a little bit and, and just come home and that's when we're together and, and he's on the court, he's with someone else, he, you know, he, he does things on his own a little bit more. Nice. That's, that's but it's, it's tough, it, it's, it's still tough, you know, no matter what you do, it's, it's tough because sometimes I'm like... I just wish I could just like go and sit on the bench and just just say, "Hi, hey, great, great job!" But not, you know, he used to play soccer, and oh my god, that was the best time for me because I <laughs> I I could care less, and I was just sitting on the sideline, and, and you know, and he anything he did, I thought it was amazing. So I was just like, you know, like, oh wow, like good job, you know, and I didn't even pay attention, and I was just there to like talk with all the other moms or something like I could care less and then I saw the other parents you know who actually this is their main sport going crazy you know so that was the <laughs> that was the funniest thing to me and I always relate to that when we're at tennis because that's what I that's what I understand the best and so anything he's doing even if he wins that point or whatever I see something he did wrong always so I'm very very critical <laughs> to anything that he does and then I'm like Oh, let's just like let me just take a deep breath and act like I'm a talker, you know, and I don't know anything and just you know clap or something. But it's difficult. At, at least you saw that soccer perspective, and then you can say, okay, well, I don't want to be. I try not to be one of them. But I know how I try. It doesn't always work. How well behaved were the parents in Greece? 
I I think it was I think it was the the whole atmosphere was just obvious that this is something different, you know. And so um I you know, I I went to his matches and then basically I was just having a good time just kind of like watching the activities and all that. I wasn't very involved watching the other matches or anything. I had no idea who he was going to play the next day. I I didn't even, you know, I just wanted to see what time he's playing and I didn't look up any player. I didn't, um, you know, probably like watch anyone and like that. So I was a little bit disconnected from that part because, you know, I was just kind of like, I, you know, this, this is a, this is a week for him to remember forever. This is probably the most fun at the tournament he's going to ever have. And I want him to have that memory as a, really positive one and and you know enjoy it not, not everybody has that opportunity to experience something like that a week like that so that was the main goal for us to um you know go and enjoy and i try to be disconnected a little bit from the tennis part so um we didn't train or anything he hit with his friend uh Mikhail rakus the czech kid for 10-15 minutes in the afternoon before they went off to do the activities and uh, overall, though, I like from what I've seen, I I think the parents did a pretty good job. They did. They were on their best behavior. Yeah, <laughs> best behavior. I mean, you don't often see this, you know. Yeah. It's, <laughs> and what what one takeaway did you take from that week? I think it was just a great reminder that you know it's 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 about the passion for the sport. That it's about it's about the 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 kids enjoying what they do. And uh, at the same time, reminder of a little bit how, how you know, you, you have to deal with the pressure, even if it's just a fun week. It's, it's, with tennis, it's always going to be the mental part of it is going to be a, a huge thing. So, you know, it's just, um, I think that the kids were able to see that even if you're having everything that, that you ask for during one week of a tournament, you still have to figure out what works for you to be able to compete the next day um and balance and uh you know like one takeaway is just you know let, let the players enjoy what they do you know um yeah, guide them but 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 let them let them enjoy what they do because you know um you don't know what's going to happen and and you want to have the best memories for the sport and for the time that you spend you know don't make it a miserable time um because you know like one of the things that from my experience, you know, the junior times were the best times probably ever of my life, you know, and, and that's where I build my friendships. That's what I, where I learned my values and, and discipline and things like that. So let, let the kids focus on that, maybe the intangibles and, and not really focus on the result as much because um, the intangibles, like the discipline, the values, the friendships, that's something they're going to carry for the rest of their life. The result is going to happen and it's over and you move on to the next tournament, you know, but let, let them enjoy the process. True. And some of these players, they may be playing for years to come as well. I, I do know uh, Jordan plays some of the players all played already. Uh, what's it? I can't think of his name now. I'm going blank. Teo. Uh, Teo, yeah. Teo. He, he, he's lost to him, hasn't he? And he's beaten them. So, yeah, these are long, long lasting relationships that could be building here, which is quite interesting. A lot of times on tv when they're talking about i don't know they're playing the first ever pro match these two players they may have played 50 times before that there may be a history there that the audience right. don't know about and it's really interesting for them right and you know whether they see each other later on or not you know on the on the tennis court it's just you know jordan's made so many friends like they the, they too already he was you know with a group of kids and uh you know some some of the things like he's telling all his friends over here all about all the games and all you know like he, he loves to be around friends and uh kids and he loves to have fun and it's just you know he he already made so many new friends like i said and he's from around the world and it's just a great thing you know yeah and let's end this with a couple of questions of your advice experience from being a tennis parent tennis coach but how about what advice there's two questions in this what advice do you have for tennis parents who aren't coaches and for tennis parents who are coaches yes so for i guess for the parents who are not coaches is you know let, let build a relationship with the coach that's a trusting relationship and let but let the coach then you know lead the 
the part on the court. If, if, if you have someone who you trust as a person and you have a feel that they care about your son or daughter, um, let them do their job because, you know, sometimes it's difficult to kind of have two, two different driving forces and, and they're not always on the same page and things like that. So make sure you communicate with the coaches a lot off the court and, and, you know, just kind of make sure you're on the same page. But then once, once the player is on the court with the coach, let them do their job. I think that's one thing because they probably know better. Um, but in no way I'm saying don't be involved, you know, it's just maybe step back when, when it's time to be on the court and, um, understand that any training is good, like not any training, but you know, we, we, I've seen a lot of parents who their main concern is who is my son or daughter playing with at training, you know, oh, they play down. No, this is not good practice for us. That is a good practice for your son or your daughter, you know, no matter how, what level you are, there is always something that they can, um, improve on. Yeah. And, and, you know, that you, your role is to support them as a parent and provide an opportunity for them to play, but then, let let the player take the accountability that no matter if they play with someone that's way better or someone that's way worse, they have something to improve because it's it's the, their own accountability to improve every single day. So, um, you know, build a relationship with the coach and communicate with the coach, but let them do their job and, and let your child be accountable um, for their own development, you know, take advantage of the time on the court no matter who it's with. So okay. I guess that okay. kind of goes both ways. And I guess the... The parents that are coaches, that's a tough one. I'm learning that every day. <laughs> I don't know it all, you know. I don't know it at all. Like, it's it's a process, you know. I just, I guess just at the end of the day, we all try to um, come home or, like, whenever we're off the court, like, make sure that, that the child knows that we love them and we support them. And, and you know, if if we are tough, it's it's the process on the court. Um and that, you know, as long as, as the player understands that we want the best for them and it's in coming in a loving way, um, that's all we can do. But I, I don't have like an exact advice. I'm trying to figure it out on, on my own. Then every day, you know, I asked <laughs> the coaches that are around us like, okay, what, like, hey, you take him because I can do this. <laughs> I know, you're right. You're right. No. Uh, Tina, thank you very much. I know you said you just got off your flight, you're a bit jet lag, but appreciate you jumping on early, Florida time to jump on this. And yeah, I can't wait to follow more of Jordan's journey in the future. Not too closely right now. Don't put any pressure on anybody, but yeah. uh, in the years to come. And yeah, thanks for jumping on and appreciate your wise words of wisdom. Yeah, I don't know if it's wisdom, but a little bit of experience, maybe. <laughs> but thank you for having me, and uh, it was great to meet you in Greece, and, you know, hopefully we'll meet somewhere again. <laughs>